All right, a lot of you have been asking how to set up the listing data, particularly if you're already using Inventory Lab. Now the good news is Inventory Lab stores most of the data we're gonna be using, and this process is much simpler, and I've actually developed a tool to help you transfer your data over from Inventory Lab back over to the tracking spreadsheet, and uh, if, you're, if you want to, you should be able to get rid of Inventory Lab at that point. So before you cancel your Inventory Lab membership, you wanna make sure you pull all the data that you need, and this whole process will be much easier. Unfortunately, Amazon doesn't have a lot of great reports. You can pull like your active listings or your open inventory reports from the inventory tab under Seller Central, and you can try and get some of this information. Um, the mo more of this that you can fill in, the better off the spreadsheet's gonna work. If you just have your sales data, you can still complete your um, income statements, you can still get a lot of the turn rate information, um, but unfortunately, the, uh, it won't be as good now, let's say you decide to use this moving forward. You can use the listing spreadsheet and you will have all your data in the exact right format and you will have a lot better metrics moving forward if you wanna start taking better uh, control of your business. So the way this works, you definitely have to have the SKU or the merchant SKU. This is what everything else feeds off of. This is how the spreadsheet is, is essentially based. You can put the source in if you have it. That's gonna give you all the source metrics. Date code's irrelevant. That's just for you building this, your own SKU so I can see when I listed it. You do not have to use the same format. You don't even have to use it if you don't want. The ASIN is not calculated anywhere in the spreadsheet. It's just there if you wanna look up, let's say this particular SKU, you could just um, copy paste this into Amazon and see what the product actually is. So again, date code and ASIN are not necessarily used. They're just there as extra information. The cost per book is what you paid. If you've coded your SKUs, you should be able to pull that out and drop it in. Your list price per book, again, if you don't have it, that's okay. A lot of you use repricers and might price everything at $200, for example, to start with, that's okay as well. Again, sales rank, it's gonna feed into your sales rank analysis, but if you don't have it from day one, that's all right. If you use the listing spreadsheet moving forward, you'll start to develop that really good data. Quantity is important in understanding how many books are coming through, and then the condition, that's just that just is what it is, it's not necessary. Same with the notes, that's just if you wanna look back and see what you have. Date listed is very important. You do want to have that in there to make sure that it's uh, it's feeding properly. Um, and that's going to help you with understanding how many books you're listing each month. It'll also feed into your inventory turn rate. Your total ship cost, that's going to be, and let, let me sh explain ship cost per book or ship cost per item. If you list 100 books and it costs you $100, for example, which is, it's never going to cost that much unless you're shipping from Hawaii, that's a dollar a book. So 100 bucks divided by 100 books $1 a book, that goes here. If some of your books, let's say you have two of a particular SKU, that's gonna show up as $2 here. And you could do the math yourself. Again, if you're using a listing spreadsheet, it'll do it for you. Your total cost is your quantity times the cost per book. Just gives you a total cost rather than uh, here is just the per book or per unit basis. And then total list price, the same thing. It's gonna be quantity times list price. Um, and so that's how you have to get your data. Let's show you Inventory Lab. So again, if you're gonna get rid of it, that's fine. Um, it is a nice software, but for me, I'd rather have the 50 bucks a month and put that somewhere else. You're gonna to wanna to come in here, go under Inventory and click Closed Batches, and you're gonna to have to download every one of these reports. Unfortunately, I don't think you can do them um, all in one fell swoop. So just go all the way to the bottom and work your way up. Click on the batch name. When it opens up, go to the top right corner here to Export and say Closed Batch. You can name it something else if you want. I'll just leave it alone as is. That's gonna download here. And then again, you're gonna do that with all of the closed batches all the way through. When you open the data, you're gonna notice it's in a slightly different format than what we actually want. So we'll kind of hold this up here. Again, we've got SKU, so that lines up. The source is way over here. So you kind of have to manipulate the spreadsheet if you wanna get it. Um, but don't worry, I've made this very easy for you. Um, I created a piece of software, actually just a fancy spreadsheet. This one does have a macro enabled. It's called the Inventory Lab Data Converter 5000. And when it opens up, you're gonna say enable macros. Why'd I call it 5000? It just seems more powerful that way. I tried to have some fun. So I tried to make it very clear. Inventory Lab data goes here. So essentially you can get your closed batch. Don't grab the title, leave those alone and just grab all of your data, copy it. Then we're gonna come back over to the converter and go ahead and paste that. Um, the piece that's not included with Inventory Lab is the total shipping cost. If you don't care, you can't find that information, that's all right. It's not going to hurt anything. If you want a more complete picture of your overall uh, net profit, you will want to track that back in. 
So in this particular batch, there's 73 units. Let's say it cost us $50 just for simplicity's sake. What you do is per item, you take 50 divided by the number of units or 50 divided by 73. Drop that in, it's gonna be 68 cents an item. You can drag that all the way down and that's just gonna put um, per item, that's all you care about here. The total ship cost is then gonna take the item cost, so you're gonna say equals that per item cost times quantity. So on one unit, it's gonna be 68 cents. On two units, it's gonna be a little bit higher. Let's see if we can do our math, yep, $1.37. Uh, and what's that doing? It's, it should be $1.36, but it's actually rounding. This will probably be 68 and a half if we looked at it further. Yep. So once you have your data in the right format, you're gonna to wanna to do the same thing with all of your batches and just complete this down as far as you need to go. Once you have everything in place, try to make a nice little button, it's very simple. It just says, make it happen, cap'n. Go ahead and click that when you're ready. And this macro is actually just gonna run in the background. You can just watch your screen and it's, it's like I'm at your house on your computer messing around with your spreadsheet. So it's gonna manipulate the data for you. It's gonna put it all in the right format. And once this is done, you can simply copy and paste this data back into the tracker spreadsheet. You're welcome. All right, so hopefully that clears up any questions. I'll let this finish out and just show you the final, the final process here, what it looks like. Um, and in the meantime, you should be able to go and pull all of your inventory lab data, make sure it's saved on your hard drive if you're gonna cancel that before you do so, so you have the data, and this will make it a lot easier for you moving forward. So as you can see, it's just running in the backgrounds. This may go a little faster on a Windows, I'm not sure. Um, Excel was never meant to work on a Mac. But again, once this is all done, you should have uh, very accurate data to go back and look at your business, analyze, maybe make some decisions. Remember, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. And we're trying to make that as simple as possible. Again, it's just a one-time fee. So once that's done, just copy paste it into the tracking spreadsheet and you're good to go. Thanks for watching.